Hello to all my sixth graders. I miss you very much and I am continuing to post um, some videos of the ending of Waiting for Normal. I wish we could all be in the classroom reading this together, but I at least wanted to record what was left so you could hear it. And um, I've had to lock myself in my daughter's room because I have three kids and a husband and a dog. And I don't know how your quarantine situation is, but it's hard to find a quiet place here. So I'm sure you guys probably have the same thing. So uh, hopefully you can um, get the link to these recordings. I'm going to post the, um, the one I already recorded, which is t chapters 37 through 39. It should be um, there for you to see. And now I'm going to go ahead and record chapters 40 through... I'm not sure how far I'm going to go right now. We're going to see how long it takes because I'm trying to do this in like 25 to 30 minute video segments. Um, but we're getting closer to the end and we're on chapter 40, which is entitled Fiesta Night. And um, I'm sure you guys could probably make some predictions about what that might mean. I would like to predict that maybe it has something to do with a celebration. A fiesta is a party. Pretty sure that word means celebration in Spanish. Um, but we don't know what could be going on. I think I read the last line. It said Sula had been having energy problems. So that's the first line in this chapter. So it makes me kind of worry about Sula. We know she's been battling cancer and um, taking treatments for that. But we have chapter 40 through 48. Oh, wait a minute. 49. Just kidding. 40 through 49 left, so we've got um, pages 243 to 290 still to read, so I'm thinking, you know, probably two or three more video segments, we should be able to finish it up. Um, please leave comments or questions or go to our Google Classroom and we can start a discussion of what's happening. Even though we're not at school, we can still talk to each other. Um, I have communicated with about um, a third of of you all and I hope to continue to hear from you and talk about your assignments and things that are happening in your life and how um, things are going. So let me go ahead and get started though. This is Fiesta Night, which is chapter 40. Sula had been having energy problems. Her skin seemed kind of yellowy to me. She kept trying to powder up her face, but the yellow always showed through. I wondered if she'd ever have that last chemo treatment. So I'm thinking maybe, you know, sometimes people get sick and it's hard for them to take their treatment. So maybe um, Addie's thinking, you know, maybe she's not going to get to have it because she's not up to it. You know, your body has to be able to, to handle it because chemo can be really hard on people's body. Um, we had started to eat together most nights. When Sula let me cook for her, I felt good. Like I was repaying some of her kindness. It turned out that she liked toast dinners. She said they reminded her of the food she had eaten as a kid. That makes me happy because Addie had a lot of times cooked for herself and mom's gone. Mommers is gone. And so now she's getting to be a part of this family, even though it's not her her own um, kind of blood family. She's, she still has a family and that's that's important. Makes me remember being young again, she told me one night as she took a bite of my special tomato soup on toast. And there's not much on this planet that does that for this old girl anymore. You're my hero, Cookie. Sometimes Elliot stayed around for dinner. And he and Sula got into salad wars. Elliot made the salad and Sula refused to eat it. I was wondering what salad wars were. I've probably done that with my kids and vegetables and stuff that I've wanted them to eat and they don't always want to eat it. The darker the greens, the higher the vitamin C, he said. He slid the bowl under her nose and she wa she swatted at him. Get that away from me, you fool, she said. She turned her head away. My ancestors didn't fight their way to the top of the food chain to look down and see me eating leaves. Oh, come on, crab cake. Afraid you might get healthy? He shook the salad tongs at her. Look at me, Elliot, Sula snapped. Do I look like I'm about to get healthy? Maybe you should try, he shouted back. <clears throat> I kept eating through their fight and wondering if everything would be okay. Poor Elliot. His face was red for half an hour. He didn't eat much. Just pushed the food around on his plate. I made sure I ate lots of salad. There's Addie again trying to fix things. 
Later, he brought Sula a Twinkies cake from out front <clears throat> and said he was sorry. You should eat whatever you want, he said. Sula eyed him for a moment. Are you still gonna have that party for me after the last chemo? She tapped a slipper-covered foot out in front of her and stuck out her bottom lip. Like that. Like she's making a sad face. Of course, <clears throat> Elliot told her. With a chocolate cake as big as a boulder, she pleaded. Oh, that's disgusting, he said. Then he grinned at me and rolled his eyes. A folded corner tortilla. Now there's a break in the page here. I'll show you because you don't have your copy with you. Um, there's a break right there. So we know that we talked about that and how that means that there's usually, what, like a lapse of time or the next day or something like that. So after the break, it says, a folded corn tortilla sizzled in the pan on the back of the stove and an oily haze hung in the trailer. So what does that mean? Addie's gone from eating dinner with Sula and Elliot to probably the next day because she's eating again and she's cooking in the trailer. So she's not at Sula's anymore. She's back in, in her own home. I smelled meat and beans with chili powder. Hope you're hungry, mommers. Whooped as hooped. Sorry. As I walked in the door, I already ate tonight, I said. I didn't think you'd be here. Oh, so I was wrong. It's been a while since I've looked at this. So what I was wrong about is that Mommers is actually at home in the trailer cooking for Addie, and Addie's coming back from eating dinner with Sula and Elliot. Got to pay attention to my context, or I'm going to get this story all mixed up, right? Well, she grinned and brought her hands together in a loud clap. You're going to eat again. It's fiesta night. She made big sweeping loops in the air with one finger. She turned the tortilla with a fork, picked up a knife, and split a green pepper in two. A mound of chopped onion and another of grated cheese were piled in bowls near her elbow. Stir that pot of slop, will you? What's the occasion, I asked. I pushed a spoon into the meat and beans and stirred. Who needs an occasion? It's a fiesta. Hey, Ron, my thing for you.